Hello everybody, this is Cool Scratch Tutorials, and today we are going over a very simple and easy way to make yourself a clicker game. You can either expand on this idea or just keep the code for further reference. So let's just get into the video. So right now I've opened up a very new project. I've named it Clicking Game, and it's just the very basic presets that you have when you make a new project. So I'm going to delete Scratch Cat here, and what I want to do is we're gonna make ourselves an apple clicker game. So each time we click an apple, our score is gonna go up for the apple counter, it's apples plus one, plus one. And then if we want, we are going to add a way where each click you can get two apples or three apples depending on upgrades or something like that. So what I've searched up here is apple transparent background. It's very important that it's a transparent image Otherwise, there's going to be a white outline, which is going to make it very hard to work with. So I'm going to click on the first image here. You can see it's white on the back, but when we click on the image, there's this checkerboard pattern. That is perfect, and that is what we want. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to save the image. I'm going to save it as Apple Image. And I'm going to just save it, and you can see it appears down here. So let's go into our clicking game. And what we want to do is upload our image. So let's go to Upload Sprite. And what we want to do is go down until we find it in our download section, because that's where we downloaded it. And we can see mine's right here. So I'm going to select it. And I'm going to press Open. And we can see our apple appears right here. We can look into the costume. And we can see it's a, uh, it is a transparent image, which is perfect. Now, let's just make it size down to 60 because I think it's a bit big. And I think we should make it a little lower down in the screen, maybe like 0, 060 as the x and y coordinate. So x is 0, and then maybe negative 60. So if I click on it, it goes to that position. I think that's perfectly good. So let's go to the green flag clicked. So whenever we click this, it will go to that position. Next, what we want to do is when we hover over the apple, we want it to get a little bigger. So let's go and grab an if else statement. And we are going to want to go to sensing when if touching mouse pointer, then we want to set our size to 70%. Notice how our, our regular size is 60, so it's just going to be one level higher than 60 and otherwise we want to set it to 60 percent so and we want to drag a forever loop over this so it doesn't just happen once it always is like this press green flag when we hover over it it grows a little bit that's awesome now we want to drag in one more if else statement so whenever we click this sprite it will get smaller and then back bigger again so you can tell when you clicked it so let's go to sensing again and let's drag one touching mouse pointer so sense when our mouse is over this and mouse down mouse down question mark is if it's actually touching the screen so if i press mouse down it's false because i'm not touching anywhere on the screen we want both these to work together so i'm going to go to our operators here and drag in an and block let's put both of them inside of the and block and just put it down into the if else statement so if we're touching this sprite and our, we're clicking, then it, we should make it grow. So let's set our size to, it's normally 60, let's set it to 70, and then otherwise set it to 60 again. So we can see when we click it, it will go back down, and that's exactly what we want. So we can tell each time we click it. Now that we've got our basic idea down of when we click the apple, the code just for the apple, let's make a counter first so we can see how many apples we have in total. So let's go to our variable section and let's click make a variable. We want to select for all sprites because we want this to affect other sprites as well. And let's call this apples count. So it will count the amount of apples, that's just the name. And we can see it shows up here. 
each time we restart the program, we want the code to basically restart. So let's click set apples count where the green flag clicked uh, code is. So if we just change this one, let's just say as an example, when we click, click the green flag, it will go back to zero. So each time we want it to click, we want our apples count to go up by one. So if touching mouse pointer and mouse down, set size to 70, and we want to change our apple count by one. But as you see, we can just hold it, and our number will go up very, very quickly. So to solve this problem, let's go into our control panel. We can see we have the wait uh, block, the repeat forever, but the one we're looking for is the wait until block. So let's drag it in this if statement here. So wait until. We don't want it to wait one second. We want to wait until, let's drag in our equal sign, and let's go to our sensing and grab one of these mouse down blocks. So we want to wait till we're not holding it to reset our counter, basically, so we can click again. So let's change this to false. So we know when we click, when we're not clicking, it'll send the message that our mouse down is false. So once we release, then it'll be able to do it again. So wait until our mouse down is not touching. So if we click, if we click the green flag, it resets to zero. And we can't hold it anymore. As you can see, I can drag it around. But I, each time I click it, that's when it'll go up one. I can't hold it, which is great. So we have our basic counter down for our Apple and the, the code for making our Apple move. Now let's make it look a bit better and a bit more fancy. So if we double click on our variable up here, make sure that it's showing down here if you want to see it. So if I click the check mark, it goes away. So I'll double click it and we can see it's just this counter right here, which it looks much cleaner and much nicer. So I'm going to drag it right here like so. I'm going to create another sprite and I'm going to call this apples. So say apples, and then one of the colons, so it shows how many apples. I'm going to make it into black text. And I'm going to change the font to this font, because I like that a lot. I'm just going to click it again and drag it to the very center right here. And then I'm going to select the apples right here and just put in our top left right here. So we have our counter with our apples, and it shows how many we have. So when we reset it. Apples is zero, and that just looks, looks much more clean, much nicer, and it, it just looks better, yeah. Next, what we want to do is maybe just create a background. So what I've done here is I've searched up moving GIF background. GIF just stands for uh, a set of motions, so it's many different pictures, and we can just sort that out quickly. I'm going to look for one I like, oh, maybe this one, and we can see that it's moving, so I'm going to go right click it, I'm going to save image as. I'm going to save this image as background image. And then I'm just going to save it, and we can see it appears down here. Let's go back to our game, and let's go to choose a sprite, and go all the way up to upload sprite once more. And let's find our background image, GIF. We can see it appears right here. So I'm going to click it. We can see it's right here, and I'm going to click Open. What's really nice about this is that there's many different characters, which if, when we click on them, it will slowly start moving and make the loop we just saw. The only problem is that it's not in the right dimensions. So to fix that, I'm going to go to the Select tool. I'm going to select from the top left corner all the way down to the bottom right. I know it's hard to see the line, but you can see right here that I actually have selected it. I'm going to click this bottom right corner and drag it all the way to where I can't anymore. Then I'm going to let go, go to the top left, and do the same. And we can see it's in the perfect dimensions right now. It's a little stretched out, but when we do this for all the images, it's going to look good. So I'm going to do the same for here. I'm going to select everything. And I'm going to drag this to the right, drag this to the left. And we can see it is just it is like the same as this one. I'm going to do the same for the third one. 
just do this however many times you have the repeating background if it's not centered. I'm going to do it for the fourth one now. And now the fifth one. There we go. So we see I've just scaled everything up to its full size. And now let's go to the script for our background here. And I'm going to go to events when green flag clicked. And we are going to want to go to go to X zero and Y zero. So it's going to go to the very center. But we can see a problem here is that we can't see any of our sprites. So to fix that, what we want to do is go into our look section. And we want to go down to we see go to the selection front layer. Drag that in, click the little arrow, and click back. Go to back layer. So now, everything still appears, it's just in the back. But I say we want to make this move. So to do that, we're going to want to go to control, drag in the forever loop, and then the next costume. See, if we do this, we can see it moves really rapidly, and we don't want that. So let's go to our uh, control section and drag in, oh, wait one second. One second's a little much, so let's just make this 0.1. We can see that it's slowly moving, but we can see that it's shifting. And I don't really want that to be shifting. So if we go here, we can see that it is turning, but there is one that is slowly messing it up. I think it's this one. I'm just going to scale it a little bit higher, like so. That one seems fine. And there we go, it's a turning background. It's a little slow still, I think. I'm going to make it just actually 0 0.5. So just a very small turning background. There we go. And let's say I want it to not be as dark. I want it to be a little lighter. So I'm going to go to our look section once again. I'm going to go to change effect by. Drag into the green flag clicked and select ghost. Change ghost effect by 25. But what's really important is that we go up here to our look section right here and we want to go to, let me just find it, clear graphic effects. Put that at the very beginning up here so that when we reset it, it's going to look fine. See now it's just a bit lighter, it's moving. I actually want it just a bit faster. There you go, it's moving. Animated background. We can see we can click now. So we see our number of apples. And it's just a very simple clicker game. Thank you for watching this cool Scratch Tutorials video. And if you enjoyed it or learned something new, be sure to hit that like and subscribe button. And I'll catch you guys in the next video. Goodbye.